Welcome, uh, I mean, welcome to the Class Force <laughs> Seminar. And uh, let's see the hands here. How many of you are, are, have done the class, all of Class 4? That's what we we're doing. Okay, level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, right? How many are on a higher uh, auditing uh, training? Okay, good. So, several of you. Okay, and I'd like to ask also at this time, how, how many of you, uh, well, let's start with uh, how many above clear? Yeah, Alice, okay, above OT3? Yeah, Alice, above Excalibur? Okay, that's as good. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, to start off, uh, we assume then, I will take it from the level that everybody has studied and uh, done their class four, and they have at least done some auditing on the, on PCs at grade zero to four. Now, having said that, I want to first, since this is more like the first two parts of an internship, it's like the theory and practical parts before you would really get in there and uh, become very smooth and competent at class four auditing. So we will first ask for, because I want to bring this up in the beginning, does anybody have from their study or from their auditing experience up to class four any burning questions that they haven't been able to resolve with the tech or with looking up the words or whatever, any any frogging that's been sitting in your mind about uh, class four. No, that's good, very good. I didn't want to go ahead over somebody sitting there wanting wonder when my question will be answered, because because then people tend to not listen to the rest of the seminar. <laughs> One question, but not so burning. All the wrong indications. When you get the read on the meter and the PC says no, and then you ask, has someone told you you had an ARC break when it wasn't true? Yes. And what is the question? Uh, he never got the read on that question. Has anyone ever told you you had an ARC break? And he didn't, but when he never got the read then. When he asked, was it a wrong read, he got the read. Then it was a wrong read. Did you indicate that? Yeah. Did that handle it? Could you go on with the audit? That did handle it. Well, that's what you did then. Essentially what you ran into there, and we will cover that later on, essentially what you ran into is that uh, whatever that read was coming from, uh, it operated as a wrong item, as a wrong item, a wrong indication on the preclear. He didn't have an answer for that. He didn't have an answer of the reverse kind, false or reverse false kind. And therefore, it was reading, but he couldn't it's it. He could not it's it because it was not his. And then therefore, if you indicate uh, that is a false read, it should handle the situation you can go on with the auditing. That's all you need to do at a lower level. Essentially, what you're saying there is the wrong item. Whatever behind that read is, the PC is not up to looking at it right now, and it's some of it back in there is a wrong item. And if you push it on the PC, you will make him dramatize something else. You see. Now, this will come up when we talk about uh, the various aspects of the composite case. Okay. So, we'll. Yes, I've got um, maybe a burning question about the sequence of grad. Uh, if, if you have a PC on grade zero, and he found a really burning service pack. Do you handle at grade zero, or do you make, um, because you know it's going to count at grade zero, uh, and you are waiting for that for? Uh, well, uh, my answer to that is that this is more in the CSing sphere, but that there are such things as called resistive case points. Those are things which stop the preclear from advancing on the normal bridge. And uh, just because he hasn't reached level three doesn't mean that you don't run ARC breaks. Just because he's uh, nattering and critical doesn't mean that you, and not to level two, doesn't mean you pull, don't pull the misbetol. So the answer to your question is, if it's cs as a resistive point, then it is run service fact as a review cycle. And then when you come to the grade four, you would just make sure that that process or whatever that particular flow of service fact was 
you would watch, be, make very sure you don't overrun it, and that you acknowledge it and rehab it, whatever that flow was that he ran before. Um, <clears throat> now, before we get into, we're already into a CS course here. Uh, yeah, trying to do a class for seminar. <laughs> That'll be later. I mean, <laughs> okay. So if there's not other anything just about the grades themselves, I mean, those were, were proper questions, because I know you do run into that. But if there's not any more things just about the grades themselves, let's look at some of the basics. Okay, I want to start off, because since I'm assuming, see, we're looking at you here, no matter what grade or level you are, as people who have just learned to handle pre-clears. So, let's put five here, class four. Seminar. So let's look at some of the basic elements that you have been trained to handle and look at it in an overall view now of what is it. So let's start off with pre-clear, PC, pre-clear. Can somebody tell me what that means? In class fours? <laughs> All right. Uh, somebody who is not clear yet. Pretty clear. Someone who is not clear. Yeah. Or descriptive or comparative definitions. By the way, this is a definition which defines it by what it is not. Do you have the axioms here? There's if you have the axioms here, there's several type of definitions. This is a definition which is by comparison with what it is not. So it is not quite yet a good descriptive definition. Can someone add to that? Yes. Someone who gets audited to become clear. All right. Someone to become clear. That's part of the de definition. Yes. A person who has still his reactive mind in the first time. Good. All right. Yeah. I think the fact that he's a DC may say that he might at least uh, agree a little bit that it might be possible that something is not quite okay. Uh, could you could you make that a little shorter? Uh... He, he's somebody who agrees he is a DC. Uh -huh. Aha. Something disturbing or. Uh -huh. I guess that the disturbances in light and agrees he's not clear. Yes, that would all be right because if you indicated he was when he wasn't, he would have an ARC break. Any more descriptive or comparative or somebody who is identified with action definitions? Yes, somebody go ahead. Somebody who is identified with is composite. Identified with is composite. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Okay, so we've got now a much more large definition here, or descriptive, some of it's descriptive, some of it's the action, some of it's the comparative. Pre-clear, someone who is not clear yet, someone audit to become clear, a person who has still a uh, reactive mind on the first dynamic, has disturbances in life, agrees he is not clear, someone who is identified with his composite. Now I can certainly tell this is not a Dianetic seminar because no one has come up with the definition or the descriptive definition from the Dianetics book, <laughs> where it's completely handled, or uh, as is all the engrams, uh, which were affecting his uh, ability to compute. Remember down there, that, and at that time it was all at one lifetime, this lifetime. So we could say that pre clear with somebody who has not handled all of his engrams, which affect his computation in this lifetime. that one in there too, because remember, any time you definitely have a preclear, one of the resistive points, or one of the sides of the bridge you might have to run first, is dynamics, or any of its variations, like uh, the dynamic assist, the expanded dynamics, even handling secondaries, lock scan, anything like that is still okay to run on a preclear. 
Now, so we're gonna, uh, maybe, how many of you did do a dynamics course, by the way? Oh, good, good. So we're not talking about mysterious things here. Sorry, <laughs> Okay, that's good. <coughs> now, there are probably many more uh, descriptive and comparative definitions that we can add to that. You could start by listing all the grades and saying somebody can't communicate with everybody yet. You list all the abilities of the grades and say something you can't do. <laughs> but I think it would be wise at this point for the auditors involved to get a pictorial, representative, pictorial representation of this because we know that when we move along a little bit and we get the definition of clear, that some of the best definitions of clear have to do with the person being separated out from his composite. Now, that may not be the de best definition for the pre-clear himself, but it certainly is the most useful definition to the CS, to the audit. All right? So, let's, you know, because it has something you can work with logically. You can ask questions and get answers from the PC or from the folder about it. Clean. It's just as obvious as this glass and this bottle are separate. It's not just a feeling or it's wonderful or something like that. So let's look at it when the glass and bottle are together like that. So let's draw a picture, a real descriptive pictorial definition of what is a preclear. And I will say this at this time, that actually class 4 auditing is sometimes much more confusing than upper level review. Because at that level, the CSs and auditors are all thinking in terms of totally separate individual entities, beings, postulates, and so on like that, and they know how to differentiate them. But in class four, you're dealing with what Andy said here, someone's identified with his composite, and you are auditing the whole thing without the pre-clear differentiating it. Notice I said pre-clear. As long as he's a pre-clear, he doesn't fully differentiate it. So you as the auditor better have the idea and the knowledge of what you're auditing. And so you can see this differentiation taking place on a gradient. And once you see that, once we draw the picture here, you will be able then to align all the other things you've been taught on class four, including the auditor's code, the rudiments, false reads, and all of the various processes of the levels. On the cool. Okay, so we know that in basic uh, Scientology symbology, this someone we are talking about here, a person, well, maybe that's not as clear, but a someone, we're talking about the one being the fate. Now, that is basically the prefix. That is who we are auditing. Do you agree? Were you taught anything else? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, obviously and physically, he is already walking into your session connected to either inside or outside or nearby of his body. Let's say at the pre clear level, let's just put his body around here. Were you taught anything else than that? <laughs> let's call this let's call this the body. Hidden theta. Body. And the preclear is not his body. I assume you all know that. Okay, now, we already have two parts of a composite. Sorry, two things or two parts which are composited. Theta, body. Okay, now, we also know that this theta here, and uh, somebody said it up here. A person who still has... Now, when you say person, you're normally referring to the thing plus the body. That's what people on Earth usually refer to as a person. They they in fact, they even refer to it even if they don't know about the thing. So a person who stu has still reactive mind on first dynamic. So realize that this state is not just sitting like that. You know, he's, he's mocking up or has mocked up and is carrying around various pictures... Right? He's got his attention on. <clears throat> and masses and ridges. 
picture, mass, ridge, picture, mass, mass. And by the way, Nelson? and those other little pictures around the mass, or back of the mass that he can't see really yet. <laughs> well, that's part of more of the combat. Now, also, we have the body's experiences on the track in this lifetime when he was with it uh, in grams, secondaries, locks, things like that, which he also believes are his totally. But some of them do belong to the actual body track. Now, the body has them and he has them. Now, we know in later levels, sometimes there's some the body has that he doesn't know about because he wasn't there. <laughs> we call those hidden body incidents because only the body was there and it had it, but he didn't. <laughs> and so that is another, so we add, say adding to the composite, engram secondaries, locks of his when he was there with the body and some maybe when he wasn't there and the body got hurt. Now, we have also the... <sighs> Well, okay, let's take that one next. Let's take what we know from OT3, that there are other entities around of a smaller or compressed nature or even a bigger nature that were invalidated from being a regular thing down to being a BT or cluster. And we can put them all around. <laughs> Actually, as you know, from OT3, you put thousands of them around here. Yeah. All right, it's looking pretty composite, isn't it? And we're not even finished yet. Because before we even leave this little first dynamic picture, we have to take into account this great ability of Thetis to do a thing called copy. And the great ability also of stuck BTs and clusters to copy. Okay. So now you might as well multiply the number of pictures, mental image pictures sitting around the body by at least 8,000, <laughs> something like that. So we've got many more pictures. And remember, he's copying too. He may be copying again all of those pictures, and he's got now 50,000 pictures or so. <laughs> all right, so now we're getting there. Okay. Now remember some of the pictures would be, of course, the favorite thing to try and uh, ease people's pain when they uh, didn't have auditing, and that was from taking drugs, alcohol, or medicines. So you have drug, alcohol, and medicine copies all around the body, too. <laughs> you have all of this going on, and, and remember, those were sort of overrun solutions to try and get the guy feeling better sometimes. I mean, if he voluntarily took the drug. Now we, let's start to move it out to the other flows. We have the self-to-self -self composite here, you might say. Now remember, there are others in the game. Not just these guys. <laughs> but there are other things in the game with bodies like this. <laughs> and with composite cases like this. Remember, there is some interchange going on in life all the time, in spite of all this. So. This composite case, or pre here, is normally associating in his dynamics with others. So he's got intentions coming out of here. And they may not be so strong. They may be waving a bit because they go through all these pictures and stuff. But remember, the other guys in the game are also giving him intentions. <laughs> which he's got attention on. So these intentions, these intentions as they come in, they can also be copied. All right, copies, 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 copies. And some people have a disturbing habit of throwing BTs and clusters along with their intentions. So some of them come in with B's and C's on them, loose ones that came from this guy's case, trying to get rid of them, or to control this guy. He learned it in black magic. Now you have this horrible looking thing here, trying to play in the game, and having charge, 
with other players, because they're, they're similar to this too, so you can't help but have charge. You're not going to have a nice clean ARC line there all the time. So let's put here just boxes with numbers and representing different dynamics. Even just up to eight, and there is normally some ARC breaks and some BPC in those, which is again being copied by parts of the composite and being held there firmly, and so on. So there's BPC usually on these dynamics in some form or another. Now that BPC could be any of this stuff that you're handling on the grades, you know, from ARC breaks problems, over W's, ARC, uh, changes in life, uh, service facts, whatever. We're talking now that there is BPC between him and the dynamics of the game he's playing. Now, also he's got his possessions. He may have some problems with his possessions on his own first dynamic. So let's say it's a little BPC there, but actually... What you're looking at here, besides his possessions, which he knows are not him, but he thinks they're his, what you're looking at here in this box is actually what the person considers he is. And that is his, quote, first dynamic. Now, luckily enough, or fortunately enough, not all of this stuff is pushing in on him or being re-stimulated all at the same time. You might look like look at it like a series of these Christmas tree lights you see on the trees. They're not on all the time, but they go <laughs> Okay, so this we can say, okay, this is more or less a picture of a composite case. And if you have the perception, the theta perception, and look at a guy with theta perception, uh, that is a uh, pre clear, you can almost see the Christmas tree there, you know? <laughs> if, if instead of drawing these with pins, I had made little lights there that turned on and off by some random method, well, we would turn out the lights here, and you would see these flashing lights back and forth, and so on. And sometimes it would be nothing flashing at all, and it would appear that the guy was okay. Now, that is what you would call a key out. Maybe. The lights are still there, and they may come on in two seconds. But for the moment, the guy's not being stimulated. So we call that a key out. So, on the grades, uh, zero to four, and what you've been studying and so on, you are actually trained to, in order, take apart this composite and key out certain parts of it so that they never come in again. They never turn on again. Until the right level to handle them. For example, we can key out his intention about, well, let's say this area of illness in his leg. And that would also key out the BT here was copied, but the BT would still be there. Or maybe he would move out a little further. He would certainly be there to be run on OT3. But meanwhile, he, the, the preclay, doesn't have to have the little light turn on there and throw his attention down there every two days. Now, it is true that occasionally uh, you can hit some major incident or major uh, key out or something that will actually blow some of these BTs away from the composite. But that's not so surprising, is it? Because black magicians have been able to throw BTs around for years. And of course, oh, if you make them feel happy, they might leave and go somewhere else. No, the big trick is to free them from the incidents that are holding them as BTs. <laughs> and as you know, we do that on OT3. But now below clear, what we're mainly interested in doing is getting this guy all of these little alarm lights and Christmas tree lights to go out. And not only that, but to move out some distance away from, where was he? This guy, here. <laughs> now, as I said, they're not all going out all at the same time, but they all are there, ready to go at the same time. They, I mean, they are ready to be turned on and off. Now, what you should have been trained 
to be as an auditor is a person who, <laughs> if the person has a lot of his lights on, in other words, he's over-stimulated, that you should have been trained in to take away charge immediately. Without Tom. running any process, but just be stimulated. And only when you have the lights turned off, all the blinking lights are off, and the, and the face went, oh, well, I feel okay now. At least right here in the auditing room, I feel okay. Which means you have put in the rudiments, or a rude, and you've got a little present time, half inning space for that. Then your training should have told you that the next thing to do now is selectively re-stimulate the next area, have the guy handle it. Tom, so what I'm trying to point out here is that many class four auditors are not taught that auditing has two distinctive purposes. It can destimulate existing charge with certain processes, such as lists, uh, not listing and knowing, but uh, bypass charge lists, and uh, certain rudiment questions, touch assist, any other kind of assist, location, so on, contact. So those are destimulative. When the guy is observed to be too stimulated, and only when you have him down to at least an F in a little space in the auditing room, uh, we would see it here with all these lights out and just the Thetan and his body sitting there. Then auditing can be used to selectively re-stimulate any of these dynamics, any of these areas of the body, any of these uh, uh, intentions coming in on the guy, any problems you may have. Because remember, you're auditing questions of processes, grade processes, are stimulating. So if you're going to be a good guy in this world, that's why you don't go around and do coffee shop auditing. You understand what I'm saying? Auditing is stimulating. It has to be to get at the charge. And the only way you can, once you have re-stimulated, is to complete that process to the proper end phenomena, which indicates to you that that area is now clear of charge. So if you just go into a coffee shop and tell a guy, hey, I got this great new process on grade two, I found out, you know, ha, 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 ha. You know, uh, it's called, uh, yeah, what is the problem and how do you feel about it now? The guy's sitting there and he goes, well, that would be my wife, you see, and, uh, well, I don't feel so good about it now. And the guy's, no, 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 I'm just, just telling you the process, that's all. I mean, you know, you know it's just something interesting I learned today. Goodbye now, I gotta go. And they're both drinking beer and stuff like that. And BT is copying all this stuff. Problem with the wife, you know, and the questions. You can almost see the lights turning on around this guy. So that is why Ron said... Don't do coffee shop auditing, huh? And we'll go into that a little further when we go over the auditor's code. But right away you can see that in the atmosphere of a coffee shop it is not a session space, and it is not well set up to guarantee that you get to the EP. I might add at this point that this is the same reason that you should have your publics not to discuss their cases with each other. Do you all understand that? because the public are going to get together and turn on more lights. And in your next session, when, when you bring the, those publics into audit, them, you're going to find more charge there than when they left the session last time. Now, of course, if you're interested in just making money, it's wonderful. Because you get to do more auditing and you don't get anywhere. You just key out what was keyed in during the day. And you can keep this up for as long as the pre-clears will stand for it, because basically it's a betrayal of the trust that you gave the pre-clear that you would handle his case, not just to uh, keep uh, sort of letting the water come on, letting the lights come on and then turning them off for it. So you're actually denying the pre-clear the rate of improvement that you could give him. And that is a bit of an overt to yourself and your own integrity, as well as Okay, so now do you see what I 
said in the beginning, why sometimes auditing preclears is even more uh, difficult or even confusing to the auditor uh, than auditing uh, at an upper level review stage. Do you understand that? Because this is confusing. This is very confusing. You have to really be very smart and use your meter. But I will tell you this, the important thing in this whole page is to know that as auditors, class four, you must understand that auditing can be used to stimulate or assist type auditing and keying out auditing uh, to stimulate. And it can be used to re-stimulate. And don't mix it up. Don't mix them up. If a guy is re-stimulated, de-stimulate. Only when he's de-stimulated can you then selectively re-stimulate and get him up the bridge. And don't let your preclears talk to each other about your cases. If they want to know why, just tell it hurts your wallet. On twenty money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions about this chart? Okay, I have one. How come I can tell you all this, don't talk about cases and all this stuff, and yet I'm talking to you about cases? <laughs> well, the answer to that, I will even give the answer on this because I asked it. Perhaps the oh, it's solo. It's because of the second basic thing. Does it? you need in auditing das ist wegen der and that is called an auditor and as we get this defined I think you will see the reason because you are all auditors that's why I can talk to you about this uh, not thanks. here as a preclear or a case so let's have these answers here what is an auditor let's get the definition worked right out a person that is listening. Good. Who listens or a person who listens? More descriptive, more. Yeah. A person asking a question to the PC, which the PC can answer. Person has a, a technology, a technology to help other persons, and is willing to do it. Yeah. A person uh, knowingly re-stimulating a PC and letting him get close over what has been re-stimulated. Or distinctively re-stimulates, it's not knowingly. Distinctively. Knowingly. Yeah. Distinctively yeah. stimulates a person and lets him become oh. cause over what has been re-stimulated. And let Okay. I still haven't given the definition which allows me to talk to you about cases. Yeah. Someone having no case. Right. And I'll put it here while be the auditor. <laughs> A person following the auditor's code. Okay. Good. Any more descriptive or anything? Yeah. A person that is willing to confront evil. <laughs> Any more? Descriptive or comparative or or action definitions? A person freeing another person. Okay. Someone who helps 
ourselves to finish on complete side. So. Oh, that's good. Anyone else? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, that's just that's what we've got here. Person who listens, who asks a question to pre-click a pre-click an answer, has tech to help another, and is willing to do so, who can uh, uh, knowingly dis- and distinctively re-stimulate a person and let him get a cause over <coughs> it, someone who has no case while being the auditor, who follows the auditor's code, who is willing to confront evil, a person who can free another person, and can help a person finishing complete cycles. Okay? Does that sum it up pretty well for you? We might come up with some more angles on this, you know, based on what the auditor uh, uses in the session, or to create a safe space to do this in, or you might say is can position himself outside of the games of pre clear. Create it. So let's put can create a safe space. Um, OBC can position himself outside of the games of pre clear. You know what happens when you get mutual roots and all that stuff. You know what, uh, what happens when you audit under games condition. Hmm. It doesn't work. Okay. So now you you might also say, uh well, we might as well stick another one in there, which uh, <laughs> understands ARC and can maintain it or repair it with PC. That's so it can remain an auditor. Now, you see, there's the definition of in session, briefly willing to talk to auditor and interested in our case. Now, you might say that that, well, that's right. Let's put it down here, because it is very important. Hey, in session equals pre-clear willing to talk to auditor and interested in own case. Now, that is a beautiful definition by Ron, because almost every word in there is loaded with significance. Very important. You can almost derive the entire auditor's code from that. You can assign responsibilities and uh, cramming orders based on this thing. <laughs> you can find out whether the CS knows what he's doing from this. Number lines. Number one. PC. Now, that's the guy we had over here. Is that drawing? Now, get the next word. Willing. Now, you probably all met some people who are not even willing to talk about anything personal to you. For instance, your bank manager. Especially if it's Mark Gaby. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what his problems are. But uh, most people in, in life, they, they just do social co- conversation and they don't really get into their case. But somehow, once you get trained as an auditor, you can sit down and people come and start opening up the case to you within two minutes. So what is this willing? How, how does that willingness fit with the definition of an auditor? Well, he's willing, the auditor, first of all, is willing to help another. And he is someone who doesn't have a case, or is in very good case shape if he's outside in the session. And he can free another person. He can create a safe space. And importantly, he can position himself outside of the games of the other person. Now somehow, even in this Christmas tree situation, that is very recognizable to a person. You know, it doesn't hurt to be in this guy's space. <laughs> if he was a little more knowledgeable of the terminology, you might say, hey, nothing turned on when I was talking to this guy. <laughs> uh, I stayed keyed out, or I, I got keyed out when I talked to him. The lights turned off. So Die Lichter sind ausgegangen. Okay, so that willingness is part of what the auditor gets, whether he knows it or not, by being trained as an auditor. This is not necessarily a quality of the pre to begin with. Willing to talk. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. just be in the same space, but to talk to the auditor. So if a guy's been trained as an auditor, he usually keeps a bit of that beingness when he's in the society, and he finds this willingness in a lot of people. But now, I want to ask you, therefore, whose responsibility is it to get point one done? Hmm. The auditor's responsibility is his total responsibility. It's totally his, and it 
is his in that session. He has no recourse if he can't do that. You understand what I'm saying? The auditor sitting there, he has all the tools, he has the meter, he has the pipe charge lifts, he has screws, he has dissimilarity processes, he has his own auditor beingness. If he can't get the prequely willing to talk to him, he ain't much of an auditor. Alright, so that point number one in session, if you're looking at that from a point of view of a cramming officer or a training supervisor or a CS, you would always realize if that didn't happen in the session, it's the auditor's responsibility. All right? Now, however, there's a slight difference in number two. It says, interested in own case. Now, if that is not going right, there can be two persons or uh, hats responsible for that. What are they? Hmm? Responsibility audit. Now, but in this one, whose responsibility is it this? Probably the CS. Probably the CS, yes. And? 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 The and the auditor, of course. Look, what did I say before? Auditing be used to re-stimulate or de-stimulate. If the auditor doesn't notice the guy's already re-stimulated and tries to run a re-stimulating process, what he's going to do is go to add back as charge. The guy can't be interested in his case. But if the program is wrong, and they direct brings his attention to the wrong area, or out of gradient area in this case, then it's a CSS responsibility. I mean, it should not continue, but give another question. If the CS must notice that uh, he's just always No, the he doesn't. Not when he gives a program, and not when he gives a CS. He's audit, he, he CSs the photo the night before. Mm -hmm. Who knows what the priest clear did the morning before he came to the session if the auditor didn't spot the bypass charge. That is totally the auditor's responsibilities and the auditor's rights. He has the right to put in the roots on his pre-clear at any time or to handle any injuries or stuff, touch assist or whatever. I mean, you could say, well, yes, yes, we have to go by the church policy. He has to go and get a CS first and all that. But that doesn't help if you're out in the Autobahn here and the guy's lying there bleeding all over the place <laughs> or in pain. Look, uh, you're trained as an auditor. You are trained to, you have the tech to help another and is willing to do so. What the hell are you going to do put a V in there if somebody needs a destimulating process from something that happened in life or talking about case with another? That is not necessarily to program that. It's just a matter to remove the charge. Uh, Class 4 should know how to do <clears> that. <throat> he can use a destimulating process and he doesn't need anybody's permission <inaudible> to do that. <inaudible> that is part of his hat as an auditor here. He can is will help another is willing to do so. He must, of course, report that session to the CS. The CS mo might want to do a more complete handling of that. It may change the program on the case. But you're just wasting time if you try to get the CS first for something you already know how to do. For instance, a touch assist or put in the roots or L1C. You see what I mean? We're talking about between the last session and this, the guy it was one day after that, and the guy comes in with BPC that he didn't have when he left the session. The auditor has the rights to take out and do a, a bypass charge assessment or to do rudiments, and, but if then the session still won't run, he has to send it up to see us, of course. But what I'm saying is, if the guy is an auditor and he has the tech to help another and is willing to do so, but doesn't do so, that makes another ARC break called no auditing ARC break <laughs> with the preclear who is expecting to be helped. Now, we are talking here about the gray area which was over, overdone by the church with their campaign for standard tech which didn't let an auditor, even a volunteer minister, do anything. No matter if he was in South America, in the jungle, he had to get a CS from Flag before he could run a touch assist on a native who just got cut with a spear, effectively stopping auditors from helping pre-clears. Now, there is a gradient on this, because it is a gray area right in here between totally in the chair every day and being programmed and CS'd every day. Let's say program CS daily on the PC. Over here, we have sudden 
least in given as an origination of something to the author. So he handled it with pre queer. Because pre queer is the one that, that originated this. What are we saying here? Are we letting the pre queer be the CS? Are okay. we queuing the inane? No. Let's go back to this definition before about the two ways you can use audit to stimulate or to selectively to stimulate. Can and we? To stimulate. So this is a sudden stimulation I would put here in L and L, life and livingness. This time comes under the category of uh, over restim. This comes under the category of perhaps some of that also, but it's sort of program and also selective restim and destim. So this comes under again the heading of bypass charge lists, boots, uh, assists. Which an auditor is trained to recognize and do. And he, rec he also knows, however, that the handling of this may require a change in the program. So he takes this report, gives it to the CS. Or, if the, in this case, interest in known case, if the CS program does not, PC says, well, I'm not interested in that or whatever, then the auditor has to return to the CS for a new CS or a new program. Now, Remember that the preclear is willing to talk to the auditor. He's already the auditor for that preclear. That is the responsibility of the auditor. And the auditor here is getting origination from the preclear about some sudden restimulation. If he doesn't at least destimulate or key it out to some degree at this point, and the preclear knows he's an auditor, he is going to then have a no auditing ARC break with the auditor. And you're going to knock out this point of incession. If there is too much of a calm lag in handling, I mean, the auditor and preclear are right there. So the auditor, if he knows this class four material, so what is the stimulative for this type of thing, he can keep the ARC, maintain it, and repair whatever this stem is, at least to some degree, I'm by using mm -hmm. these things. And get some relief from the re-stimulation without air nice breaking thing. the preclear. <laughs> Keeps in the idea of health. And then inform the CS. So it might because it might change the program. It's in auditor's rights as well. But since we bought up the area, we were talking about it as an example from one day to the next. But let's suppose this preclear was off auditing for say six months. Now in that time you've got a lot of L and L. A lot of life and living this charge could come in at that time. Now, the proper thing there is, of course, you pull out the guy and say, oh, he's back. He wants some audit. And if you're at the place where the CS is, you send the folder up to the CS first, and you get probably a CS for doing a D of P to find out what the guy did during all this time. Did anything come up that's now charged up or reading? Yeah. Since your last auditing, how you been doing? <laughs> you can even do a little dynamic run through. Huh? Everything all right on your first dynamic? How's the second dynamic? Yeah, yeah. But, so you don't know if he's got out roots yet during this time. But it might come up right there in the DUP. Oh, yeah, I had this horrible experience. Blah, 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 blah. So, see, you're, the CS has asked for DUP, but still the auditor's rights apply. And even while it's supposed to be, supposed to be doing two-way comm, D P, the, uh, the pre-clear, as soon as you hit the, uh, say, the uh, third dynamic, the guy's talking about, oh, this horrible group of guys he ran into in Italy, they mugged him and stole his car. <laughs> well, I mean, right away, you could do a bypass charge list on that. Or if it was a problem with uh, one of his friends down there that got him involved in that, he could run down the roots between him and his friend. And again, that would then go up to the CS. He doesn't actually have to stop the DP. He just says, handle any out routes that come up. Uh, by BPC and carry on, finish the DP, and then give the CS all the data. I mean, I've seen preclears come out of one of those and feeling so good they think it's all been handled. But from a CS viewpoint, you may see that some more needs to be handled and dug around there because there is more charge to get off of that. 
You see, it has to do something with the way the guy's been running anyway. He's always running into these criminal mobs and all this kind of stuff. So you might say, aha, you know what this guy needs? He needs a resistive case handling thing on other practices involving criminality. <laughs> or if he's been too much the victim, he may need a whole sec check on that type of area himself to get his overts off so he can become a cause again. But that is never put in by the auditor without CS. He only does the destimulative thing, which is obvious, and reports to the CS. Nothing to selectively stimulate a new area. Okay. You understand that? Is that clear now? It is the auditor's job to maintain himself as a terminal for his pre-clears as a help, source of help, a source of having a safe space, and a place where the pre-clear is willing to talk to. Circling those areas, maintain ARC, help, help, willing to talk. Um, then how does the IRCAR 